I want to go over some very important things. I hopefully you will enjoy this program. We'll move right through it. Uh, the most important thing, which I will go into, I will go into sleeping positions in just a moment. But the first thing I want to mention uh, that the worst position you can be in is on your back. You see, the problem with snoring is that the tongue, which I'm going to show you a whole bunch of interesting pictures, that the tongue falls back in the throat. Uh, and obviously, when we start encroaching or narrowing that, that passage where the ear goes through, we get a vibratory type of uh, situation that causes this <laughs> that, that, that sound or that loss of, quote, uh, oxygen or that narrowing of the space that we're getting. Uh, realize uh, people who are more overweight are going to have more problems because you bear more fat behind the throat area which is going to cause more narrowing. So let's go into uh, a little bit of sleeping positions. I will go through that uh, first, uh, then I'll come back to some other important things. Number one, sleeping on your back is, as we say, the worst position to be in. But even what's worse than sleeping on your back is putting your hands behind your head when you're sleeping on your back. That even narrows it more. Now, very few people know that, but the the facts are out there. So positioning with your arms has an effect of with your neck. Uh, so uh, there are many different uh, things that are out there to help snorers. And I'm going to show you a, a few of them, but I want to really go through this first. Uh, but when we sleep on our back, as we are narrowing the airway, uh, this is what's leading to approximately 75% of snorers out there uh, who will have some type of sleep apnea. Now, because you snore and because you wake up refreshed does not, does not mean you don't have sleep apnea. The only way you're gonna know it is by being checked. And most people are not gonna get checked. But the problem is, is if you notice you're tired and sluggish the next morning, I recommend you follow up and get this checked. Why? Because as you lack oxygen into the body, you're lacking oxygen to the heart, uh, you're lacking oxygen to the brain, to cells, and you can't afford that. That is your life. That is your lifeline. So uh, I want to just make sure that you understand that if you're having cognitive changes, problems even in your relationship, problems even going to sleep or falling asleep or staying asleep or waking up all the time and just being confused or lightheaded or dizzy, these are all common symptoms of possible sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea. So all of us will snore at certain times, depending upon how and what type of position we put our head in. But as we say, the worst position is our head going down, our chin going down. So that tells us the first thing. If we know that when our, we're laying on our back and our chin is down, we have pillows behind our head like this, obviously we're closing the airway here. If we close the airway, what do we have to do? We have to open the airway. So there are types of things out there which you can do at home. You can put a pillow underneath your your chin or something underneath the chin that keeps you from going downwards. Now, obviously, the best position to sleep in is on your side. Okay, left or right side doesn't matter. Preferably, you keep the spine straight, and you don't want your head propped down. But most people who are going to snore are going to be on their back, and they have a hard time getting on their side. Now, stomach sleepers, if you are a stomach sleeper, um, it's better than being on your back. Okay, but don't use a pillow. All right you're going to snore less being on your stomach than you will being on your back. So back is definitely the worst. Now, another thing you can do is elevate, uh, put a couple of pillows um, behind you and elevate like you're on a, maybe, you know, a 15, 20 degree, but don't put a lot of pillows behind your head. Again, when the chin goes down, you close the airway. The chin must be back. Okay. So you're going to have to be creative. There's no doctor nor any genius is going to tell you exactly what's right for you. <clears throat> you got to do what's right for you and you got to figure it out. But there's nothing worse than the person laying next to you and hearing that noise. <sighs> because when you're out to lunch and you can't hear anything and you're really in a deep REM sleep, you're not going to hear it. And that person is going to maybe be a little irritable or sleep in the next room. And you understand what I'm talking about here. Um, propping up the abdominal area. Uh, sometimes uh, putting something under the abdominal area seems to help reduce snoring, 
All right. I don't have all the research. There's controversy on there, but I've read a lot of blogs. People say when they put something on the, under the abdominal area, when they when they sleep on their stomach by elevating the abdominal area, I gather maybe the angle of where your head is positioned has an effect on your snoring. So that's something I just wanted to throw out and maybe you can explore with that. So realize, number one, you need to get off the back. And number two, if you're on the back, I'm going to show you something you can do to help you in just a second. Okay, let's go on to uh, a couple other things. Number one, losing weight. I will tell you, I promise you, half the people out there will limit snoring, limit sleep apnea if you lose weight. Your doctors will tell you the same thing because remember, this is about the tongue. This is about the adenoids. This is about uh, the structures behind the back of the, the pharynx. Uh, this is the passageway, which I'm going to show you pictures. And these are the kind of things that's obstructing the ear. Remember, the ear is trying to get through. Remember, if you have a hose and the hose is narrow, that pressure has to be pushed harder and faster. The same thing with air. You have to get a, still enough oxygen to your lungs and to your heart and to your bloodstream to make sure that you're staying healthy. So as this is being pushed harder, you're getting that vibration. That vibration is coming through that's causing that because you have little space. But as you lose weight... I'll promise you that space or that extra fat will start to dissipate, enlarging that space, and it will allow you to snore less. So, and I tell you this because many people are on CPAP machines. A CPAP uh, is a machine that goes over your face and it, it takes oxygen, the air from the outside. It's not, it's not normal. It's not different than the air outside. And it forces into your mouth through or through your face and through that area, it forces it enough to, so when you breathe, it helps that air get through. That's basically what it does. It's pressure, and it makes you breathe easier. But it still has not corrected the cause of your condition. So losing weight is extremely important. Another big thing, okay, because when I talk about losing weight, what I'm telling you is it helps the diameter of the airway. That's important, and that's the most important thing because we don't want the diameter to collapse to get narrow, that's what's going to obstruct the, the airway. Avoiding alcohol. Alcohol seems to be a big one in there because alcohol, even sedatives that you may be taking right now, like Ativan, Xanax, and other medications because you may be in pain or might be stressed or might have a lot of anxiety, but these particular medicines, these sedatives, will make you snore more because it reduces the resting tone of those muscles in the back of your throat and it will make you snore more. So, if you are drinking alcohol, um, I don't recommend that you drink it at least four hours before you go to bed. A lot of people out there, oh, honey, let's have some wine. Let's, you know, feel a little toasty. Like, listen, that may be beautiful, but it's not going to help your snoring. It's going to make it worse. Alcohol is like a sedative when it comes down to the same effect it's going to have on the back of your passages in the airway. So it's something I wanted to mention that's really important. Um, we talk about... Uh, good sleep hygiene. Uh, make sure that you are using the correct pillows. And I'm going to go over this in just a second. I'm going to run through these different things and teach you a little about apnea and tell you more about it in just a second. Uh, but re realize that if you are overtired and uh, you work long hours, you're not getting enough sleep, uh, this will make those muscles more floppier. This will increase more snoring. So if you're overtired, uh, it will make those muscles more sloppier behind the throat area. Uh, very common, open nasal passages. I'm big with uh, steaming. I like uh, menthol, eucalyptus. Uh, there's some really nice essential oils you can put in the steamer to open up the back of your sinuses. If you have sinus problems and you can't get through in here, it can make you snore as well. All right. So, uh, that is something I would recommend, particularly hot showers. Let the steam open it up. The steam vasodilates. Uh, some people are allergic to pollens. People are allergic to dust mites. You may have mold in your house. You may have dust up in the fan. Uh, your pillows may be filled with dust, making you allergic, making you stuffed up. That will make you snore more. So maybe change your pillows, wash them, make sure you, you go through the, the air filters, make sure they're changed, make sure you have none of that dander, that dust, even your pets in your bed. 
from the from the fur may make you allergic. It can clog you up and you can run the doctor, spend a lot of money and never find the cure. The cure could be sitting right in your bed. So I wanted to share that with you that maybe that will save you lots of time, lots of aggravation. But <clears throat> as we talked about the animal dander, it's, it is definitely an irritant. Um, dust mites is a major irritant. So these things all contribute to potential snoring and constriction in the back of the throat. Uh, a very, very important thing, and, and, I, and I say this for last, is hydration. Now, this is so important. If you are not drinking enough water, and we just did something on water, basically real simple. Um, if you weigh 150 pounds, half that weight, uh, which is 75 ounces, that's how much you'd be take, you should be taking in a day. So whatever your weight is, half of that in ounces is your approximation of how much water you should be taking in. If you're not taking in, you know, five, I mean, I'm sorry, seven, eight, nine cups of water a day, uh, and you are dehydrated, uh, that will have a tremendous burden upon the constriction, the soft palate behind the nose. It becomes stickier. It becomes more dehydrated. People never address this. I'm telling you, if you're dehydrated, this will become stickier. The mucus will become thicker and this will affect your breathing and this will make you snore. So you may be doing all kinds of things I'm about to show you to help you to help you sleep better, but you must hydrate. It is extremely important. So let's go ahead and let's move through this real fast. We're, we're almost at the end here. If you look here, uh, here is a normal person. You can see the air going behind the throat. You could see a snore where the tongue is actually being pushed back and you can see the apnea where it's all, almost almost closed. So the CPAP machine tries to put pressure through there to push that open so you get air through that apnea. That's that apnea right there all the way on the right. If you look at this picture right here, a little easier to understand. The normal, you can see the back of the tongue, you can see the uvula uh, in the back, you can see how, how the air is, is traveling through and you can see when you snore how that area uh, of that of that uvula, you can see that uvula coming down. You can see the tongue uh, moving backwards, and that is encroaching that area. So that gives you a little understanding. Now, if you look at this here, okay, I did not make this up. You guys are going to be laughing, and I laughed, so I had to share this with you. And uh, I saw this was we'll how to stop snoring, and it says place a pillow tightly over your partner's face and hold it till they uh, till snoring stops. That's not nice. I did not put that together, but I had to share that with you. Don't do that. That don't do that. Okay. I just had to share that with you. And uh, this is the next one here. You don't want to do this either. Okay. This is not going to help you stop snoring. This is going to make you choke. This is going to make you gag. It's going to make you do something. Uh, don't take the easy way out. That is not the way to help this particular condition. Here is a sleep apnea cycle. Just to give you an idea that if you're waking up, and let's say you got a lot of fatigue. They even talked about impotency, the insomnia, the snoring, the dry mouth, the morning headaches. Uh, all these types of things go with sleep apnea. Uh, sleep apnea is we're lacking oxygen, we're actually we're, we're, we're lacking life inside the body, and it's going going to potentially lead to other symptoms as well. Just not snoring. I just wanted to share that with you. You can come back on my channel when this is posted. Uh, here's the first thing I want to mention. It's called the anti-snore mouth guard. Uh, this is out there. And uh, it's a mouth guard, and the whole purpose of this is to uh, bring, uh, to, to keep the, 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 the bottom part of your, of your mandible area from going backwards. It kind of pushes it forward. It brings and juts the jaw forward to keep the uvula and the tongue and everything from pushing back to obstruct that airway. And uh, these are out there. It's called an anti-snore tray, and uh, that's primarily what it's for, is to keep the vibration uh, from snoring and to uh, allow that air to go through to prevent your lower jaw uh, from going backwards. Okay, it keeps it forward. Uh, this is one of my favorite things here, uh, believe it or not, not not this one, next one. Uh, here is the breathe lift or uh, type of thing. I picked this up, not for me, but uh, you can see that this is kind of a, all bandaged up, uh, helps the snoring, the congestion, helps you sleep better. I am not recommending any of this stuff. There's only one thing I'm going to recommend, and I'll let you know in a second. We're coming up to it next. Uh, this is, people do this. They tape their face up. Uh, and if I come over here, uh, we have the brush strips. 
Now, many of you have seen this. Uh, these breasts, uh, uh, these strips here kind of, you know, just kind of come over the side of the nose, open it up. You see football players and sports athletes and runners use this kind of thing. And yes, it, it does help. It does help you breathe a little easier, particularly if you are sinuses up here, but it's not going to help the throat if your head is forward. Now, remember, what do they do in CPR? Uh, the first thing you do is you, you extend the head back. You tilt the chin up. By tilting the chin up, what are you doing? You're opening the airway. So just kind of think that if you're snoring or you're having apnea, the airway is being closed and you need to keep that airway open. Now, this is one of my favorites, probably the most simplest and the most easiest thing that you can imagine. I don't know if you know what this is. Many people do. I didn't put a person laying on here because I didn't want to show any faces. This is a cervical pillow. Now, a cervical pillow is designed to stabilize the cervical spine. I found this little guy next to me. So let's just show you. Uh, here's your back here. Lean on your back. You see the cervical curve right here. And obviously this, when I'm on my back, I want that bump. There's two bumps. Uh, if you have a long, thick neck, you can use the thicker side. If you have a shorter neck, you can use the thinner side. But that bump needs to be stabilized under the neck like this. You see what happens is right now the airway is open. Okay, now if I have two pillows under my neck, okay, watch what happens. It goes the other way here. So it starts to bend. So as it starts to bend forward like my head, you're st you start obstructing the airway. And that's why you're getting a lot of that snoring in there. So I like cervical pillows. You can get away sleeping on your back on a cervical pillow. It works. I'm telling you it works if you get the right cervical pillow. And I recommend people uh, to try this and see if it helps. It's probably a $20, $25 investment. You can get it at Amazon. You can get it through anywhere on the web. Uh, there are different ones. Uh, you, you potentially may be able to get one in your local store, uh, maybe your you know local linen store near where you live, wherever you are worldwide, and try this. Get the receipt. If it doesn't work, return it. Okay. But the purpose of this is opening up that airway. You must open up the airway, and that's primarily the most important thing for you to understand. I really think that it is extremely important that you understand that because uh, there's nothing worse than uh, than having someone in your in your bed next to you hearing you make this noise and potentially people in your house hearing you snore. And there's nothing worse getting up in the morning uh, feeling tired. I have a lot of friends on these CPAP machines uh, and personal close friends on them, uh, but they just don't want to lose weight. Most of my friends that have a lot of snoring issues are all overweight. You don't have to be fat and obese, but being overweight puts more fat, more tissue, uh, more slack into the tissue. It causes more drooping of the tissue in the back of the throat that obstructs the airway. And that's primarily it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, program. It was very simple, a lot of common sense. There's no, there's no magic in here. Um, it's just simple knowledge. And I, I, I appreciate the, the chatters out there. Uh, in the chat room out there. I've got quite a few of them out there today. And I appreciate you for you know being here with me, being proactive. And you are worldwide and you are being proactive and learning. But share this stuff, share the share this video stuff. Go on my channel. I have so many great self-help videos. I mean, all about correcting yourself naturally from, from pain to forward head posture to nutrition. Uh, share my videos. I ask you to subscribe if you are a new viewer right now. Why? Because I am on the cutting edge and I am doing my homework, probably more than I went back to school years and years ago. I really enjoy educating people like you. You guys teach me. We teach each other. This is one big family. Um, I love every one of you. Uh, God bless everyone. Take care. We'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye now.